Hi guys, it's Fernanda. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I think I'm going to have to talk a little bit lower. Today, I am joined by a special guest, my baby. It is like the middle of our nap time, and if I don't do this now, then it gets really hard to do it later. So, today's video is going to be all about what I included in my maternity leave binder. So, my maternity leave started on January 10th. I think I purposefully made my last day at work a week before my due date even though I had full intentions of working up until my due date especially because everybody told me like oh it's your first kid it's gonna come after your due date they rarely ever come before yeah that didn't happen um, I ended up having her that weekend anyway I had shared this picture on Instagram and a lot of you had reached out and wanted to know what I included in the binder I don't have the physical binder with me because Obviously, it's being used at school currently, and because things were so freaking crazy that last week when I was putting it together, I didn't get a chance to like get footage of it like I intended to. But I have most of it here saved on my computer, so I will show you. I won't cha I won't show everything because it has a lot of like identifiable information about my school and my students and stuff like that. But I will show you the structure of it. So let's start off with the cover. Cover is super simple. Things change a little bit from what you saw on Instagram. What you saw on Instagram was all pretty much black and white. Then I didn't feel like me. And I made and I just added a little bit of color. So starting off with the front cover, it just says Mrs. Sandoval. Um, kindergarten slash first grade, because those are the grades I teach if you are new here. This year I teach a combo class. Then moving on, there is the table of contents, and I have everything that is included in the binder and it's also color coded to match the cover of that particular tab so the very first tab i included in my maternity leave binder is a class list so i have a roster list in alphabetical order like it would appear when taking attendance like both classes are combined but i also included a list that separates kindergartners from first graders i included two copies one laminated and one not just in case synergy which is what we use for attendance was down and attendance needed to be manually inputted that sometimes happens so that's what that was for the next tab is class schedules i just included a skeleton outline of my daily schedule the next tab was classroom routines and in this one i included our routine for calendar time slash morning meeting arrival routines and dismissal routines all right so the next tab was the first grade pacing guide i created a pacing guide because i was not required to provide lesson plans for the 12 to 13 weeks that I'll be out. I know a lot of people out there are, which is really unfortunate, I think, because that is a ton of work to put together for time that you're not being paid for. At least my maternity leave is not paid for. So I just provided a pacing guide with the date, unit, and lesson in a quick little lesson overview. So for example, for this math one for first grade, I had the date, which was Tuesday, January 18th. I had the unit, which was unit six, add and subtract within 20. And then the lesson number, so 6.1. And then also I had like a little blurb about what that lesson was. So this specific lesson was addition with doubles. But yeah, the pacing guides were color coded as well. So every unit had its own color, so they would know all this unit ended so now we're moving on to another one the next step i have is science slash social studies all right next up i had behavior management so i explained my behavior management system in detail which was really easy to do because i already had this page done for my sub binder so just real quick i do a golden ticket system i believe i have a video on it and if i do i'll have it linked down below next tab was homework structure so i'm not a huge fan of homework i'm sure a lot of you aren't either some of you maybe but i feel like a lot of people are not a fan of homework the reason i'm not a big fan of homework is because my students are so little and i feel like most of the time the kids that really need that extra practice that homework would provide don't necessarily have a support at home to do so. The kids that don't need the extra practice are usually the ones that do have that extra support at home. Just my quick little philosophy and homework. But we were required to provide homework at my school. So what I would do for homework is I would just pick two math worksheets from the week prior and two ELA worksheets from the week prior as well and just make it into a packet. So on Monday they would do math, Tuesday ELA, Wednesday math, Thursday ELA, and Friday they would turn it in. 
So I explained that in this tab and I also provided completed homework packets for the first two weeks of my absence and then two more weeks of master copies for the weeks that followed and the idea was that this would kind of help the sub know how to create the homework packets and then just do it themselves. Did that work? I don't know, but I, I did it anyway. The next tab was monthly reading logs. Again, we were required to do homework, so this was just another thing that I did. I did make the copies for, and I did make the copies for the entire year just because it'd be easier. Next tab was teacher logins. So I left the login for my computer. I left the login for Synergy, which is, which again is the attendance program that we use. I left logins for all our programs, so like IXL, Amplify Reading, Tables, Class Dojo, the Wi-Fi password, tablet password, my, my printer password. Next up, I have student laptop logins. So my school is a one-to-one -one school, so every student has their own device, which I'm pretty sure they're all laptops. Again, I teach kindergarten and first grade, and it's kind of hard, especially for the kindergartners, to log into their computers on their own. Our RIT department made the passwords really, really hard. And by that I mean like multiple uppercase, lowercase symbols and numbers for their passwords. So it's kind of hard for my little ones to, or it was, to log in into their own computer. So if they need help, I provided the sub with all that information. The next tab is IXL logins. Again, same concept as the student laptop logins. Even though IXL was already saved into their laptops, sometimes their laptops wouldn't work and they would have to use a tablet, so they still needed their IXL login that wasn't saved onto it. So that's why I have. The Amplify reading logins, same thing. Classroom materials. So part of me feels a little petty putting this tab, but I did it anyway. So the vast majority of classroom materials, such as construction paper, glue sticks, everything like that. I would say about 98% of all those things in my classroom, I purchased with my own money. I also purchased the tablets. I purchased a ton of manipulatives, toys, stuff like that. So I basically just wrote a little blurb saying, you know, like you're more than welcome to use all these things that I bought myself. However, just please check the supply closet to see if there's anything there that you can use first. If you can't find it in there, then, then you're more than welcome to use what I have in my classroom. I also wanted to include this to make sure that the sub took care of my things and so that she didn't just assume that they were all just like school property and that they would be replaced if they needed to be because I would have to replace them. <laughs> Next up, I included important dates. So Valentine's Day, the 100th day, um, St. Patrick's Day, stuff like that, as well as student birthdays. I made sure I included student birthdays because parents love to bring in treats and I asked for parents to give us a heads up so that way, if parents haven't reached out about it, then she can reach out herself and see if that's going to be a thing. Also, so that she knows to give that student their special birthday treat that I have for them, as well as their birthday crown. Next up, I included a tab on teacher duties. So having duty as a teacher is really common. And in my school, we have morning duties. So that means that you as a teacher take a day or two where you come in and open the school. That sounds really weird, but we are such a small school that that's kind of what we have to do. So my days were Monday and Fridays, and even though school started at 8, I would come in at 7, make sure the school was open by 7.15, and then we would do temperature checks as well as watch some classes in the cafeteria. So I included that in this tab as well as, so I included that, you know, the times that they have to be there, the description of the duty, and stuff like that. I also included that we have staff meetings on Wednesdays and I included the times, so I believe those were from 3.30 to 5, which I do not miss. The next tab includes week one master copies. So the curriculums that I use across all subject areas, I have to print out the, the worksheets. So I just included all the worksheets for week one, so for math, ELA, social studies, stuff like that. And I included the master copies for the sub to make. Now that I remember, I made all the copies out for that week. And then for the next tab, which is week two, I just included the master copies. And again, the idea would be that they would get the hang of it and start doing it on their own. Next tab is accessing curriculum. So again, like I said, for ELA, I left the teacher manual that I was on, but I also explained where the curriculum room was and where to find the next unit and where to find the following units. For math, it was a curriculum that I bought on TPT. 
so I uploaded it to my cloud on Outlook and I gave her access to it so she could access the curriculum and same thing for social studies and the last tab I included was parent communication so all of my communication with parents was mostly done either in person during morning duty or through class dojo I use class dojo a ton and I explained that I would post a newsletter every Sunday night of what was to come that week so my newsletters look like this and I used PicMonkey to make those, so obviously I didn't expect this up to do the same. But I just kind of included an example of what I would include. So a message from the teacher, what first grade is learning, what kindergarten is learning that week, and friendly reminders. And I think that is everything that I included. At least I think so. Like I said, I don't have the binder with me. And unfortunately, I did not, I did not save everything that I put into it because I was just printing as I went. And I didn't save it. But if I remember anything else, I'll include it to this video. But yeah, that's it. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video.